So, for starters, this is going to be a capacitor, size 1210, um, passive parts, that is resistors, inductors, and capacitors, uh, usually come in a set of dimensions that are the common packages, so they start like 0204, 0603, um, or sorry, it was 0402, 0603, 0805, 0805 is what we commonly use for all of our resistors and capacitors. Um, it's basically as small as you can get um, and still be very easy to solder. Uh, when you get smaller than that, they start to be a little harder to solder, a little harder to handle, and also the power rating goes down. Um, service mount devices have particular, uh, I mean, all, all parts have power ratings, but for service mount devices that we use in our PCBs, the power ratings are uh, usually much closer to our maximum power, so you have to take, take uh, care, and especially when you're using things like integrated circuits. Um, they might have an entire plane that you attach this giant pad um, from the device to your board, uh, and so we'll get into that, I think, on the next chip. Uh, so, uh, so to start, uh, you guys should do and make a new library that you'll just throw out um, I'm going to open our library, but you guys should just all make this in a junk library on your own local directories um, because you're not going to commit this. But if you were to add this to our library, you'd go to open library, uh, make sure you're in your Equisat Eagle, and then brownspaceengineering.lbr. Um, so I have a bunch of things in here already, uh, but I'm just going to recreate everything anyway, uh, except for this. Actually, no, I will make it from scratch. So we're going to make an, uh, you're going to click on, let me go back. This symbol right here, do you guys see this? Um, so this is the edit symbol, and you're going to click on that. And then box down here, you're going to type cap for capacitor. And then click OK, create new symbol cap, yes. And now you have this grid. Um, you don't want to change the grid spacing. Uh, if you remember when we were doing the board layout in the previous tutorial, we were changing the grid spacing, um, but we weren't changing it in the schematic. Same thing here, you do not want to change the grid spacing here. Uh, the way the schematic editor works is very reliant on that grid spacing, and so you might end up not connecting things that you thought were connected if you mess around with that. Um, so to start, we're going to make uh, a capacitor, and a capacitor has two pins, and so you can select the pin button down here, bottom left, uh, and you move your mouse around, you'll see this. There's a little green circle uh, and then the red line. Um, I can change the orientation by right clicking, and I can change the length of that red line by clicking one of these buttons up here. And you can see it's changing accordingly. Um, and so I'm going to pick the short lead, second from the left, and I'm going to place one about there and one about there. And you can see that it popped up with these pin things. So what we're going to do is right click on each one and go to properties. Uh, and we are just going to change the direction from IO to pass for passive. On a passive part, uh, the pins are symmetrical. Uh, if you, except for electrolytic or polarized capacitors. Um, so this just gets rid of that name. Uh, and so, or sorry. But we'll do both passive and visible to off. And do the same thing with the other pin. Properties, direction, passive, visible, off. And now it should look something like this. I'll give you guys a second to uh, catch up, I guess. Good? Is good. Okay. So the next step is to draw something that looks like a capacitor. So I'm going to click on this wire button here, uh, and it's going to be on symbols, which is what we want. Uh, and I'll probably mess around with the width in a minute here. But a capacitor symbol is just two lines. Um, I'm going to draw them here and here. That's the symbol for capacitor. I'm actually going to move this over um, there. So you're just creating a symbol. Um, and if I wanted to do a resistor, I would do something more like 
uh, I have to change my wire routing, but I'd just do something like this, for example. Um, and if I wanted to do an inductor, I would uh, cry because it's annoying to make circles. Um, but I figured it out yesterday. If you want to, if you want to make something that's curved, uh, you just start off in the, like curved-ish direction, and then I'm using the Alt grid. So the same thing. Uh, if you remember from last time, if you hold down the Alt key, you get access to a, a slightly finer grid. So we don't want to place any pins or anything on this Alt grid, but we can put our symbols on the Alt grid wherever we want because they are. Uh, it's just simply for display. Um, so I can do kind of like this, and then like this. All right, I'm grandly messing this up, but you get the idea. You can make curved symbols too, um, and so that's what you might be doing for like a passive. And then we'll get to the next uh, part. We'll get to how to what the common schematics are, what the common symbols are for more complicated parts. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do. Uh, we're not going to name these parts because or the pins because they're passive pins and they're interchangeable. Um, but if you want to name the parts, you'd click on the name button and you'd name the pins uh, accordingly. But we're just going to leave it as is. So the last thing is to enter some text. So um, Eagle has a feature so, uh, built in uh, with its naming tool. So if I want to be able to name this part, I want to create a text box that is greater than symbol than all caps name. I'm going to change the layer to the names layer and place it about there. And I'm going to do the same thing um, greater than symbol value. And so now um, when I press the name button and click on this part eventually, I can rename it and the name that I enter will take the place, will, will be in this location. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and save this, and we are good here. So the next step is to create the package. So I'm going to click on the package button, which is this one right here. And I'm going to select a new package. So we discussed that we're going to be using um, a 1210. So I'm just going to type 1210, create new package and it'll bring me to this screen. Uh, it's black for me because that's how I set it in my options. It might be white for you still. Wait, where's the new package from? Um, it's at the very, it's uh, this button right here. So here we will want to change the uh, grid spacing. Um, I prefer to operate in millimeters. You could do inches or mils, but um, and commonly with PCBs in the United States, uh, things are done in mills. Uh, it's a good thing to be able to convert quickly between them. And what's a mill again? A mill is a million or a thousandth of an inch. Um, so, thousand mils in an inch, and uh, the correlation's the same as an inch essentially. In that, um, so two point five four. Uh, centimeters per inch, so 25.4 millimeters per inch, so um, 0.254 millimeters per, per mil. Um, so I'm just going to type, I like to do 0 0.1, 10, and 0 0.1. I didn't change this to millimeters. It'll automatically convert to if you change the uh, thing. Um, that can be useful uh, if you don't want to change the shape of your grid, but you just need to change units. So often, I will just keep track of trace width when I'm doing board layouts in mills because that's what all the, the fabs, uh, PCB manufacturers, do things in. Um, so it's easier to keep track that way. All right, so first thing we're going to do, uh, we have the center point here. And uh, we have to take a look at these dimensions. So there's 4.95... Um, Zoom in here. There we go. All right. Um, so this is the printed circuit board layout. Uh, all data sheets should at least list a package with a very detailed name, um, or give the layout themselves. 
Uh, and this is what you'll want to put uh, in the part or in, in the package design. Uh, if something's really complicated and you don't want to do it, uh, or you have to do a bunch of them, it might be worth trying to search on the internet, but I have not had a lot of luck finding um, things on the internet uh, that work right. Um, and that still takes some work to copy and paste those over and make sure they're all correct. So sometimes for smaller parts, it's easy to just do it uh, yourself. So um, we see that the spacing between the two pads is 1.9 millimeters. We see that the width of a pad is 1.52 millimeters. The height of a pad is 2.54 millimeters. Um, so what we're going to do, and there's, there's some flexibility with here, because this is the minimum dimension, uh, and this is a minimum dimension. But this dimension we could make bigger. All this would do is mean that there is some exposed pad uh, that's on either side of the part after we place the part on top. Um, and while this isn't um, necessarily a bad thing, it's, it's only a slight benefit, just gives you a little extra wiggle room when you're placing the part. Um, so generally, we don't want to make it too much bigger. Um, so 1.52 millimeters wide, I'm going to pick um, probably 1.75 millimeters wide and 2.54 centimeters high. So to do that, we click on the surface mount pad right here, uh, and it'll create a pad. If we go up here to the size, we can change the dimensions. So I said 1.75 by 2.54, and this is in millimeters because that's what our grid is in. I click enter, and this pops up. Um, and uh, what you, you there's two ways to place the part. You can kind of keep track of where you are in your grid coordinates and place it in the right location. Um, and we know that we have 1.9 millimeter spacing plus half the width. Um, so we could do 1.52 divided by 2 plus uh, 1.9 divided by 2. Uh, and this just gives us our offset from the center of a pad to the center of the, um, the chip um, if we had a perfect size pad. But since we want to... Uh, have that closest distance be uh, 1.9 divided by 2 away from the pad. So we want this origin to be 1.9 over 2 from the edge of the pad. And we made the pad slightly larger, so we'll need to shift it over accordingly. Um, so 1.75 divided by 2 um, minus 1.52 divided by 2 means that we need to shift 0.115 over from where we would have been. Um, I end up doing a lot of short calculations to make these parts. Um, you could do this slightly easier if you placed the part uh, right on the origin and then placed the other one relative to it. But when you get to larger parts that have like 8 pads or 12 pads and various other shapes going on, it's often easier to set this origin to be whatever origin they have listed on their um, diagram. Uh, so for this passive, it doesn't matter too much, but uh, so I'm going to do 1.9 over 2 plus um, 1 point, oops, 1.9 over 2 um, plus that 0.115 that we found. So 1.825 is where I want to place this. So I'm going to go to negative 1.8 and positive 1.8 uh, while I'm on the zero and just left click um, and now uh, you remember we want to go to 1.825 and I just kind of arbitrarily place these so you could go you could go in and when you're placing the pad um, like zoom in and use the alt tab to place it right on the right spot like this um, actually my grid isn't even fine enough for that uh, but you could do that the slightly easier way is to just right click on the pad and go to properties and you can just set the position directly so negative 1.825 0 and I can do the same thing with the other side 1.825 0 and I'm just going to confirm um, that I did this correctly by selecting the dimension tool I'm going to zoom way in right here Alt click and select that and go over to here 
and I can see yep 1.9 exactly so that's perfect um, I just use the dimension tool to check things but uh, I don't leave dimensions on there uh, and also I was in the wrong layer for dimensioning alright so next we want to lay down a shape uh, so if you looked at the PCB on the silk screen there is a uh, kind of little line that shows you where the part should go over the pads so for this it's going to just be a box so we're going to select the uh, lines button or the wire button and we're going to select T place so that's the top layer place um, layer and we see that this is 3.2 millimeters long so remember we have some overhang so 3.2 divided by 2 is 1.6 so I'm going to make um, oh okay I'm just noticing that they actually already built in this extra um, distance for us so the part that's okay. the part itself actually is 3.2 millimeters and they suggested already adding in that extra distance. Uh, I didn't notice that before. Um, so I'm going to, to, you don't need to worry about this, but since I'm doing this for a real thing, I'm going to uh, take this back to the way it was. And I'm just going to check once again that this distance is correct. Cool. Uh, it's a little off because I'm crooked here. Yep, cool. We're good. All right. So uh, we're going to draw the shape on the outside. So we see the part is 3.2 millimeters wide. So we're going to start a line at uh, 1.6 millimeters and then we see that it's 2.4 25.4 millimeters tall which is right at the edge here um, and these are just for our use they don't have to be too perfect um, so I'm gonna start at uh, 1.6 and 1.4 um, and around the T place layer I'm gonna choose one of the right angle drawing methods it makes it really easy to just I only have to select two points so I selected already 1.6, negative 1.6, 1.4. So I'm going to come back over here and select positive 1.6, 1, negative 1 1.4. And then I come back to the top where I was and I'm done. Um, 2.7. I'm going to narrow this actually a little bit uh, just because the lines themselves have some thickness and so it'll be fine. Um, when it comes down to the actual build, the uh, lines that are over pads won't actually appear. Um, so I'm actually going to... Well, it's fine. Um, because you, the uh, silk screen only displays where there's solder mask and there's no solder mask where there are pads, just exposed copper. Uh, so it can't draw any lines on top of those. Uh, so but this, this is fine for a passive part. So then uh, again we have to add the text for the labels. Um, in our boards I've chosen to only display the name the designator of the part on the board. So typically if you have a resistor, you would label on the PCB that it's R7 and it's 100 kilo ohms. But it takes up a lot of space on your board, and since we generally don't pay high enough for like really fine silk screens, we just um, kind of need to make them bigger, and if they're bigger, then uh, they take up more space and you don't want to have two of them. Uh, so we're only going to display the name, but just like we did in the symbol display, we can do greater than name. We're going to select... T names, um, and then we're going to select the size to be 0 
and we're going to place it about there. And then I just press escape twice to quit. And uh, we're all set. So I'm going to save and um, then I'm going to click on the device. I'm going to create a new device called capacitor. Actually, you guys are going to create a new device called cap. I'm going to select um, our old cap. So one of the things you can do is you can have multiple different packages for one symbol. Uh, and so I'll show you guys in a minute how that works. But you're going to create a new device called cap or capacitor. I'm just going to select the old one. And you're greeted with a screen that will be blank here. Um, and so you're going to click on this add symbol button right here. And you're going to select the capacitor that you made. Uh, there's, there's look like this. And you click OK, and then you'll just place it uh, on the board or on, on the screen, uh, kind of close to that center mark if you can. Then, once you've placed the symbol, you're going to click on New on the bottom right hand corner, and you're going to create a new package variant, and you're going to select the 1210. Um, and then, since we're creating a variant, we're going to right click on this, select technologies, and select one, two, oh, that's not what I want to select, sorry. We're going to select uh, one, two, one, oh. It's a new technology, and click OK. And then we're going to click, so the next thing, um, since it's a capacitor, we want every part that we place to be, uh, have a prefix of C. So we're going to select prefix and just type C. And we also want it to display the value. Um, so we're going to just select this as on. And I'm still getting this. All right, so then we're going to click the connect button. And this allows us to link the schematic the symbol to the package. Uh, and since we don't care, since it's a normal capacitor, we're just going to select connect and connect. And then OK. And the little green check mark should appear. So what did that just do? That just linked this pin here on the symbol to one of these pads on the package. And then I am still trying to figure out, actually, this variant thing. And I appear to be failing. Um, but that's not important now. All right. So then we're going to press Save. And then to view, uh, you just click Table of Contents. And uh, you should see your capacitor there. All right. And just to test this, we're going to oh, make a new schematic. Uh, click add part, find wherever you saved that. Okay, I didn't do it right. Uh, you can see now that we have I have multiple capacitors, that there's a, a capacitor, my mouse just stopped. All right, there's uh, multiple capacitors for drop down, and I can select which package I want. So I'm going to select the one we picked. I'm going to place it. Looks good. First pops up just C1. And I can give it a value, and the value pops up. And if we go over to the board side, um, you can see that our part is here, and it's labeled C1. Um, this is just a verification that it all worked. Uh, if you don't see this, um, this is a good time to go back through and retrace your steps. But I'm going to keep moving on unless there are any questions. How do I add it again? Uh, the add part button is right here. Yeah. 
and you click add part and you'll need to find the library that you made it in. Oh, if you don't see the library, yeah, if you don't see the library, um, you'll need to click on the top menu bar, library, use, and then go navigate to wherever you stored the library, and then you'll be able to see the library in the add part area. Are these the first two parts that we made? This is the first one, just the first one today. My computer is at the Apple store. Hmm. And we have the computers in our room now, so you can um, you can work. You can do Eagle stuff without your computer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Should I? No, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. Um, you can just follow along. Yeah. All right. So I'm just gonna not save this schematic. Um, all right. The next thing we're gonna do is uh, make a more complicated part. So uh, if you guys go to Google Drive and search 8590. This is the temperature sensor that we use. Um, if you guys have Max, you can just command space. All right, and so this part uh, has a bunch of packages. We are using the this uh, flat pack because it means we can solder the temperature sensor into place and then bend this so the actual sensing area is on top of something else, which we'll want for our batteries, uh, our LEDs, and for the radio. Um, but this part down here uh, is just a simple uh, SOIC eight lead uh, service mount device. So this is what we're going to be making. So we'll scroll down. Uh, have you guys all found this, by the way? Okay. We're gonna scroll down a bunch uh, the packages are usually at the bottom of the schematic, or of the data sheet, and uh, here we are. Is this it? Did I pick up that one? Ah. Uh, okay, this one's not great. All right, this actually isn't a great one. Let me try a different part. Uh, uh, this is this is better. Okay, let's do this one. Uh, LTC three one one two. Um, yeah, that the eighty five ninety didn't have a uh, good dimensioning on its package, and I didn't want to go searching for it online. Uh, they will tell you the package sixteen lead plastic. Well, that's not important. Uh, DFN. And so these are like standards. There are like a lot of different standardized packages, but there are standards, and you can go look these up, and it'll be the same if you get a 16 lead DFN from LT or from TI or from analog or anywhere else. Um, they might have their own variants on it, so just pay, be careful um, if you're going to be using it, the same package for multiple different parts. But we don't have that many parts where uh, we have the same package in from different suppliers, different manufacturers. All right, so um, there's that. What we're first going to do is, again, the symbol. So we're going back to our library. Uh, oh, I already made it. All right, I'll make it again. So new symbol, LCC, 3112. I'm just going to... I'm going to add a tutorial for mine because I'm going to delete it later. And click OK, click Yes, and this screen will pop up. So what we're going to do is, uh, this is page 29, we're going to scroll back to the top of the schematic, and it will give us um, all of the pins in an order that's meaningful. So when you're connecting circuit on the schematic, uh, you want it to look like the ones from the data sheet, and so you want to make sure that you're, the part you're making resemble the symbol you're making resembles the device. Uh, so you're not having to connect wires all across the place. Um, and so this has a it says 17 pins on it, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 
13, 14. There's only 14 there. Okay, so there's only 14 up there. And so the reason for that, uh, this is actually a good example, is there are multiple pins for uh, a few of the nets. So there are two SW1 pins, two SW2 pin, pins, and two VN pins. Um, they probably do this to increase the current capacity through these uh, pins. And additionally, the ground is only on uh, this pad here. It's not on the side like a pin, it's a ground pad. This is to A, uh, create a better electrical connection with ground. You have room for much more current on that ground pad than you do anywhere else. And also, it's uh, for thermal reasons. They'll be sinking all of their heat through the ground and that if you have a big ground pad, that means you can sink more heat, uh, or heat you can sink heat more efficiently. So uh, we will keep that in mind, um, and we will want to duplicate pins, uh, and or sorry, no, sorry, we don't, we do not need to duplicate pins. All right, so let's go back up here to this display, and we're essentially going to copy this. So. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we're going to go ahead. Uh, I'm going to pick short leads. And I'm going to start here. And I'm just going to place a bunch of pins like this. So I place seven down, and then I'm going to go over here um, and place the other seven. In electronics, almost always you'll find that the pinouts snake. Uh, so it'll go one through seven and then cross over and eight back up to 14. And now we're going to name these. So we're going to use the name tool and just hit all of these with the names you see here. So SW1, BST1, VN, VCC, PWM slash sync. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, run ground. So I noticed that this name is a little too big, so I'm going to move all of these. On the other side, I'm going to move them over a little bit. So to do that easily, you can select the Move tool, then select the Group tool. Then you click and drag around all of these and right-click, and you'll move Group. And I'm just going to move them over this far. All right. And then I'm going to carry on naming all the pins. OVP. I out. B, comp, B out. That's annoying. All right. So now we're going to um, make a box for this. So we just select line bunch line function again, symbols, and we're just going to draw a box around this entire thing um, that intersects all of those lines, all, all the pins. And then I'm going to just select the entire thing um, and move it so it's centered over the origin, roughly. That's just a, a little uh, aesthetic thing. Hypothetically, you should go in and name if all these are I.O. or what they are, um, but it doesn't really matter, to the best of my knowledge, at least. All right, so then we're going to do the name and value thing again. So name goes to names layer. We're going to place it there. Uh, and then we could enter in a value. 
um, but that doesn't really make any sense in this instance, so I'm just going to say LTC 3112. And then I'm going to click save, and we're good. Any questions? Where's the selector tool? For doing what? Just like selecting the whole thing. Oh, if you want to select everything, you'll, you have to click move, and then group, and then you click and drag, and then right click to move group. Right. Yeah, it's uh, one of the stupidest ways to move more than one object I've ever seen, but it works. All right, so now we're going to make the package for this. And we're going to call this uh, whatever it's called, which is a 16 lead DFN package. So we're going to call this DFN-16. <laughs> which I probably already created, right? Oh, it's also DHD-16. All right, well, that's fine. All right, and then we're going to scroll back down to page 29 of this data sheet. And there's that. Once again, I'm going to change the grid to millimeters. So the first thing I'm going to do is create this ground pad. So I'm not going to worry about this little indentation here. So it's a square, it's a rectangle that is 4.34 by 2.44. And I'm going to place this on the origin. I missed. I think. Oh, we're good. All right. And I'm going to name this name this ground. How do they have an error on their millimeters? It just seems like they could, they could cut that more exact than to have an error. It has an error of 50 microns. Oh, because oh, it's already in millimeters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I... I'm, I'm recording it, by the way. Yeah, I'm taking a video of it. Oh, I'm not doing voice and screen recording. Oh, yeah, okay, you're good. Um, mine doesn't like say the name, but it's there. Uh, you might have an old version of Eagle. Oh. What's your version of Eagle? Um, six point seven point zero. Six point seven point zero. Oh, you, you got. Six seven point six point zero. Oh yeah, seven point seven point zero just added the ability for nets to display on the pad. Oh. Um, I'm really pumped about that. I'm not joking. I'm really pumped about that. Because <laughs> it means when you're in a board, uh, looking at the board, you can just zoom in and see what the nets are. You don't have to say, show this, and then show this, and then show this. Um, it's a lot easier to figure out what certain signals are when you're looking at a board. Yeah, you should update. Big, great improvements. Super pumped about this. It's really made my day. All right. Now we're going to make the rest of these little pads. Um, so these pads are each... What is this? They're each 0 0.25. Um, sorry, actually, I'm going to zoom in here. Yep, they're, they're 0 0.25. Okay, yeah. By 0 0.7. And once again, this is the recommended solder pad dimensions. Uh, the part, the pieces themselves, are 0 0.25 by 0 0.4. Um, so this already includes a little extra room. Uh, so don't type that in, 0 0.25 by 0 0.7. And for to start, I'm actually going to use these two down here. Um, so we see that they are at half, in, uh, half millimeter pitch. 
That's the difference. That's the distance between each thing. So that means that. Um, oh, and then also we see that the distance between here and here, the tops of both of them, is three point one zero. So if we do, in order to find out the center of this first part, um, we need to do three point one divided by two plus. Um, half the, the height of the part, which is 0 0.7. And that's 2.25. All right, so our distance down is going to be negative 2.25. And our distance over is going to be um, 0 0.25. So negative 2.25. I'm going to have to use my alt grid here. So negative 2.25 and negative point, or in point 0.25. And if you're not getting a, a, if your steps are bigger than they should be in the alt grid, you just zoom in, um, and it'll adjust to the right size grid. What I mean by that is, even if your alt grid's point one, it might be jumping by point two. Uh, you just need to zoom in further. So I'm going to place that there, and then I'm going to place similarly a part negative two point two five uh, and negative point two five. This makes me think that I missed the first one. So I'm just going to double check. Ah, yes. All right. Cool. Um, now we can copy both of these, which is, sorry, you select copy, move, then drag and, and select all of your parts, right click, copy. Uh, and then I believe so yeah I'm just going to drop this here it'll kind of latch into place and then I'm going to double check the dimension the location here so negative 2.25 then negative 0.75 that's all correct uh, and this one is Negative 1.25. Yep. So we go uh, negative 0.25, negative 0.75, negative 1.25. And so we have 16 leads, so we need um, four on each side. So I need one more over here. And then I need three more over here. So I'm going to copy these three. And then uh, we can copy the entire bottom and paste it on top uh, the height of shoot, I'm going to do this again at the height of negative 2.25. Uh, to make sure that's what I'm doing, I'm going to try to select negative 2.25. I'm going to try to select them while I'm at negative 2.25 to make sure I'm at the middle. Then I copy the group, and then I make sure my cursor is at negative 2.25 again, and 0. Boom. All right, so now I'm going to check what we've done here. So I'm going to check this, this 3.1 dimension. So if we zoom way in here. Select the top of this pad. And all right, looks like I messed up somewhere. Because that's 3.75, which is too big. So let's check. This should be 4.5. And currently it is. Five point one five. All right, looks like we are off by point six five. Good work, Ryan. And this is yeah. This is why it's important to check stuff because um, 
Okay, that's that's fine. Two point four. All right, because it's easy to make some mistakes with dimensioning. Um, I'm gonna try this math again. Three point one divided by two. Um, plus zero point seven divided by two. One point nine. Yeah, I'm not sure how I ended up with two point two five before, but. We should have been doing 1.9. So we're going to move all of these. We're going to make sure we're at 2.25 when we do this. So the reason I'm, I'm making sure that we're at 2.25 when we select it is that it will Eagle will do all the measurements relative to where you select them, not necessarily where their midpoint is. So uh, if you select a group of parts, it will uh, set their, like the cursor location that it tells you up top here is uh, a representative of where you clicked relative to all those parts, not necessarily where their midpoint is. So if I didn't select 2.25 right here, then I went to place them, even if my cursor, so if I, if I just select over here, move group, if I put my cursor at 0, negative 1.9, you can clearly see it's off. So it's, it's all relative to where you select them. So that's why I'm making, taking care to, uh, whoops, to select them right in the middle. Right, zero, negative 1.9. Could you select both groups and say like, make this a distance between the two groups? Uh, no. Uh, I still messed up. That's a negative 1.95. Yeah, it looks funky to me. There might be a, a ULP for that, a user language program, um, but I don't think so. Just asking because you could do that in SolidWorks. You could say like, yeah, so should be relative to that. Yeah, that'd be nice to have. So, 1.9, 1.9, perfect. All right, and just to verify again, zoom in here. Select the top. Bounce up to this side, and 3.1, perfect. All right. So now. Uh, the next thing to do would be to add this package outline. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go to T place and add a line. And so remember how we looked down here and saw that the part was itself was 5 by 4 and that there's actually only 0 0.4 high. So we know that the top of this line is going to be 0.3 down from the top of these devices. And the top of those devices is 1.9 plus 0.35. So we're going to add 0 0.3 to that. Um, sorry, we're going to subtract 0 0.3 from that. And we should start our thing at 1.95 up. And then uh, how far over? So the pad itself is 4.34, and we have a total width of 5. So 4.34, well, that means we can just start at uh, negative, oh yeah, there's a simpler way to do this calculation. The calculation is um, 4 divided by 2 is, is 2. Uh, that's the correct way to do it, not whatever I came up with. So yeah, you just look at this, uh, see the size of the part is that, and that's this outline shape. So we'll start at uh, negative 2.5 comma 2, and go down to 2.5, negative 2, and then come back around and finish that off, and press escape to finish that. Um, now we need to add the pin 1 location. So unlike a passive, uh, the, this device has a preferred rotation. It's not, um, it's not the same as you rotate it. So, um, 
we need to mark where pin 1 is. That's typically done with a circle. So pin 1 is going to be right here. So I'm going to place a circle roughly right there. Um, and I'm just going to mess around with the width and, and radius until I get a circle that looks like it's about how big I want it to be. Uh, it's a little too big. And uh, in the right location. I'm looking to have it fill up kind of most of this area. And remember, it won't be there if the, there's, if the pad, if it's covering a pad, it won't be visible. Um, so you want to make sure that if you just kind of zoom out, that it's pretty obvious that that circle is there. Uh, so I ended up with 0.3 width and radius 0.1. And then, as before, we want to put the name down. Um, go with... 0.8. I'm going to right-click to rotate the name and put that right here. So that's also starting right next to pin 1. And escape twice to exit. All right, the last thing we have to do is name all these pins correctly. So if we scroll up to the um, second to the top page, I believe. A lot of, a lot of pages of issue. Here we go. This shows the pinout of the device. So we're going to just copy this. And we're going to rotate it by 90 degrees right here. So this is COMP. This is FB, OVP, VN. And since there's two of them, we're going to call this VN at 1 and VN at 2. Run, I out, V out, SW2 at one, SW2 at two, SW3, oops, sorry, BST2. SW1 at 1, SW1 at 2, BST1, BCC, and PWM slash sync. So that's not the letter S. What was the point of looking at the other schematic that's directly above this one and that left? Page? Oh, yeah, yeah. So looking at the other schematic was to see what pins are related uh, and where they fall on the circuit. So we want to make sure that the schematic that we end up making with all of these parts is as simple looking as possible and makes sense. If you have a lot of wires crossing over, so if, example, this BST2 pin was located down here, we'd have this wire crossing all of this stuff to get down here. And that is kind of messy and uh, detracts from readability. So we want the symbol to look like this, but the part itself has this pin out. And as long as we sync the two, it's fine. Oh, when the connections are made between them, they should look like the top one? Yes. Oh. Um, okay, cool. All right, and notice we did not put the value here because the value of this is just the name of the part, and that takes up space, but we can't afford. So um, now we're all set. Uh, I'm going to briefly mention a few Quick things, um, if you wanted to, if you had a via, so let's say you have a through hole part, you'd select this pad, you'd select the drill, which is this inside diameter where the where there's a, like a circle, that drill is a diameter of that, and then I usually select diameter to be auto, that's just the diameter of the outer shape, and you can select the shape of that outer shape um, by selecting one of these, you can change it to hex hexagonal, round, or um, one of these guys. Um, what else? Um, and so you you do the same thing. You'd place this and you'd name it. Uh, it functions exactly the same other than what it looks like. Um, and then you can do some more advanced things. So, for example, on our solar panels, um, we only have the pad.
the part of the bottom of the, of the device, but the entire bottom of the device is conductive, so we don't want to place any vias directly under it. Um, so what we can do is create a polygon, and we're going to place this polygon on the T keep out. And basically what this does is if it detects, sorry, uh, not T keep out, V keep out, or V restrict. Uh, that means via restrict. Um, and so what that does is if a via is located within an area that's V restrict, the uh, DRC, the design rule check, will give you an error um, when you try to check your designs. Um, and that'll alert you that that's a problem. So to do this, to place a polygon, select the polygon tool, select the layer we want, draw the shape that we want. Maybe it looks like this. Who knows? Um, finish off the polygon, and it'll do this, and then you're done. Uh, you can change some properties of it, how it looks, um, but these aren't too important right now. Uh, and this will now provide you with errors accordingly. All right. So now we're going to save this and go to our device. So we're going to create LTC 3112. Select yes. We're going to add the part we made before. How did I do in the previous one? Huh. Okay, I should probably just fix this. I like this new one better. Um, and we're going to add it to the middle. We're going to select prefix to be U um, for an integrated circuit. And then we're going to say new. Uh, DFN 16. How to do on this one? Yeah, these look good. They're the same, same idea. Um, connect. We're just going to go through. It should be all alphabetical, and we'll just click connect. When you get to SW1, you'll select two of them on the right, on this pad side, and select connect. Alternatively, if you did it and forgot, you could go back. Um, if I wanted to disconnect this one, I could go back and I could say, um, ooh, disconnect this one. I could say SW1, um, append, and append. Um, and, sorry. I messed this up. Disconnect. Uh, you can use the append tool too. I'm messing this up right now, but that's also an option. Um, and click OK, get the green check mark. Uh, we don't need the value here, but yeah, we're all set. And we can check out a scrap schematic, see what it looks like. looks good and it'll tell me that there's two pins there but that's fine and if you look at the board side of it there's our part and it says U1 and we're all set uh, any questions? what do you do with it now? now you would just start wiring it up and eventually you'd get something that looks like uh, that one's wrong. This one's also Wiring wrong. Wiring it up being the top schematic on the other one is the... Oops. Um, you would... So you add the part, and then you just start placing all the components around it and connecting things. That's what the top schematic was on the other one, that pink. Pink with all the wires around it. The... Which thing are you talking about? The one that had... Uh, it didn't go SW2 at... It didn't have S, It didn't have two SW2s. It just had one for each. The, the the symbol yeah yeah you add, so you oh, add the symbol okay. and start working on that first yeah. and the polygon thing that you made are you supposed to place that directly over the it depends on your or? need if you need one um, come talk to me and we'll go over it um, but you place it where you need to restrict things so if you don't want something in this certain range that's where you put the polygon right so what in the other one you'd want to place it oh, on top of the thing that you made because you don't want things that the to t be touching Yes, that. Okay. yep. And you can have overlapping polygons like that uh, that are just like restrict or like for design stuff because they're not actually real. 
um, things that get, affect the board. All right, any other questions? Cool.